which I hope will be a series of some duets every three to four weeks. And Steve Allen wrote a very catchy tune, a hit tune that John Hendricks, with whom I worked for many years, used for his opening tune every night called This Could Be the Start of Something Big. Well, I hope this is a start of something big musically. Today with me, I'm very honored to have the talented 25-year-old young man, I'll tell you more about him, Mr. Kai Lyons, a great young talent. And so this is the first in a series of duets. Hopefully people are watching from surprise places, maybe even Madagascar, who knows. Anyway, let's do the first tune by the legendary bebop pianist Sonny Clark. And this is called News for Lulu. I'll tell you a little more about it after. Thank you. 
Sunny Clark. Sunny Clark originates from Pittsburgh. All the towns, big towns in America were amazing. From Pittsburgh, you had Errol Conger, Ama Jamal, Horace Parlin, bass player John Hurd, Ray Brown, Billy Strayhorn, I probably forgot somebody, but amazing. And so Sonny Clark moved to LA and played at the Lighthouse with a lot of great people there. And the West Coast Jazz, basically, as I mentioned on one of the recent programs, was, they had some mellow and soft and kind of swinging stuff, but most of the people on West Coast, from East Coast and Middle West, are bar players. So, um, Sonny played there, he met Buddy DeFranco and toured with him and then he found his way to New York and recorded this on an album called Sonny's Crib with Train, Curtis Fuller in the front line. Great album. So next, let's uh, move on. Something just a little bit brighter called Jelko's Belef Blues. Jelko Kerleta is from former Yugoslavia. He's an architect, lives in Belgrade. He used to have a radio program in London, and he brought us to a big festival, 2,000 people, same festival that features Santana, and I'll tell you more about it. I wrote a tune for him called Jelko's Belef. Belef is a festival name, the summer festival. Jelko's Belef Blues. I just need a little sip of water. One second.
Senor Kai Lyons, the reason I say Senor, this young man speaks fluent Spanish. He and his family lived in South America, and not only does he speak fluent Spanish, but he travels everywhere. He attended a music convention in Ghana. Also, he goes to Cuba all the time, and he absorbs any different kinds of music very quickly, Balkan music, Spanish, and I understand you were invited to play in high circles in jam sessions in in Havana when they heard from you. That's what your uncle told me. Yeah, the skyline. So speaking of that, we're, oh, I should tell you about Belgrade, uh, the last tune. We had a great band. My stepson, Josh Workman, was there. Mike Zisman on bass. Chuck McPherson, Charles' son on drums. And we had a Cuban percussionist, Lazaro del Toro Vega, who lives in Belgrade. He's married to a Serbian lady. Wonderful Cuban percussionist. So we had 2,000 people. What a nice scene to play. Next tune, I'll tell you more about it. I'm dedicated to a wonderful friend, Senor Ron Levaco, who is an award-winning documentarian, taught film at SF State. This is called Tabu from Cuba by Ernesto Lecuona. I'll tell you more about it after we finish playing.
in Serbia, when they had Jewish people there, my father would use the Serbian word for schmuck called schmokrio, and it's still there, somebody who's messing around. Anyway, thank you, Ron. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's see the next tune. Uh, the next tune, ah. Kai Lyons goes to Brazil. Let's play the classic Ari Barroso, late 30s Brazil, which still stands.
young man with a great taste. Uh, Kai, are you uh, 25 or are you 75? <laughs> He's 75, he just looks for you. <laughs> Kai Lyons, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, great music from Brazil. Kai was at the Copacabana Beach. He hung through the country learning music and a great experience when you travel, that's when you pick up uh, the stuff. Uh, speaking of uh, Brazil, what came first to Brazil? Late 30s, I think early 40, maybe late 30s, Carmen Miranda, the great dancer, very natural, vocalist, talent, rhythm, she deserves wider recognition. She made films that were, you know, commercial and all that, but she brought with her a phenomenal group of Brazilian musicians who had that samba feel. Among them was the phenomenal virtuoso guitarist Garotto. And how good he was? After performances in New York, he would play late in a club, and who was listening to him? Duke Ellington, R. Taylor, they followed him regularly. And said, wow, this guy brought something different. He had some fresh harmonies. Of course, Brazilian music, modern music, was influenced by jazz, but their own flavor was what brought it out their rhythms and they had their own harmonic flavor reflecting the beauty of Brazilian music and uh, so Kai is going to play an original by Garoto on the acoustic guitar.
beautiful piece, Guy. Uh, let me ask you, did you uh, find the music for this or did you orchestrate it yourself? By I, ear? I found the music. You found the music, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Garotto wrote a whole bunch of pieces. One of the albums you can hear, there was a Brazilian guitarist who spent time. There was a guitar shop on Clement Street called Guitar Solo and he hung there and Paolo Bellinati was his name. You can go on YouTube, check Paolo Bellinati, who did a great job. Then you can hear Garotto play himself on YouTube along with another Brazilian. See, this is all before Bossa Nova. They paved the way. And how I heard the music in the 50s, I bought early albums before Bossa Nova by Laurindo Almeida, who played with Garotto in Sao Paulo. And he brought his Brazilian music and he recorded some music by another Brazilian, Radames Gnatali, great pianist. So uh, all this stuff paved the way for Bossa Nova to come in. Uh, let's see, why don't we do a, another flavor now, something from my album Blue Balkan that was released 1980 featuring one of the best violinists ever to play this music, Eric Golub. Speaking of wider recognition, this guy should have been big name, but we know how the music business is always pushing people with big names who also deserve it, but they overlook people. And uh, of course, the pop music and rock, that's another story. But Eric Golub is on the album along with Bobby Hutchison and this tune is called Belgrade Blues.
release of the album and it received rare reviews. Ahead of its time, it was re-released in 2000 and two, uh, Gary Giddens put at the top of his list in New York and reviews ahead of its time. So what was sad with this pandemic, 40 years later, 2020, we had a date at Yoshi's to play 40th anniversary, Harry Gold, Tommy Kessaker, Marimba, Vince Delgado, and Jeff Chambers, Akira, great band, however, canceled. But Yoshi says a fundraiser, fundraiser, you can donate it. Pretty soon they'll be operating, I hope again, then maybe we can do it. So that's Belgrade Blues. Now we'll do a beautiful ballad that you hardly ever hear today. It's called, I Couldn't Sleep a Wink Last Night. It comes from a film, Higher and Higher. It's about debutantes. The story is not real heavy, but what it is, it features the young Frank Sinatra. Pure Voice, 1943. I'll tell you about it after.
to speak, I can challenge him and tell him, look man, Rakimaninov, Toscanini are high on jazz, so basically keep your mouth shut in a, so many, in a nicer way. And uh, Barry Harris stated, when Europe stop, stopped writing, then we took over, meaning that and bebop advanced the melodies Chopin and creative European composers would have liked it. There's no question. Bach, they were creative, they improvised. And bebop is the new advanced music of syncopation, turns, melodic things and everything. So America has a strong contribution. So to go back to this, Frank Sinatra's first film, He's singing on screen to a beautiful French actress, Michelle Morgan. She, among other French people, the director, Jean Renoir, the son of the famous painter, another actor, Jean Gabin, escaped Hitler. They went to Hollywood. And Sinatra, in those days, sang beautifully with a pure sound. He always was an excellent musician, but uh, the Vegas and stuff and that way of living kind of made the music a little rougher, even though he swung and everything, but I liked the early period. Um, let me see, right now, speaking of ethnic music, this is from an album that my friend Marco Tucic from Bosnia-Herzegovina Trevinia produced called Blues for Red, tribute to Red Garland title track, it had great line, Dusko Gojkovic, Serbian trumpet player from Belgrade, and Charles McPherson, the leading alto player, still is. And there is a tune I dedicated to Eddie's young son, who is now playing drums, grown up and successful business cat. His name is Al Sid, and I kind of play with words called that Al Sid meets El Sid. And El Cid dealt with Moors, they brought high culture to Spain. I'll tell you about that later. Here is El Cid meets El Cid. Thank you. 
vanilla Moorish Arabic flavor. You have Balkan scales too. You have a touch of different things. You have a touch of uh, Arabic, Turkish, Klezmer, a little of everything mixed. However, gypsies, gypsy Roma people came from India to Spain. They made a difference and helped develop flamenco. That's gypsy Spanish music, flamenco. And uh, I mentioned uh, last week when I did this tune in a solo presentation that Moors brought so much culture to Spain. Spain had three universities, the Moors said 17. They brought high math, algebra, higher mathematics, they brought fruits, citrus, lemons, uh, peaches, I, I can't remember everything, and they brought street lighting, and, and El Cid fought them, I think he moved them out, but they brought something, and uh, brought a lot of culture, and there is a joke, I'll repeat it, maybe some of you maybe haven't seen the show last week, Algebra is from the Arabic word algebra. Well, there was a group at the airport called Algebra, kind of suspicious name for these times. They were arrested at the airport for carrying weapons of math instruction. Anyway, we got a little humor algebra. So you know, it depends what name you use. Anyway, that's a story. Let's see how much tempo how are we doing. I hope you are enjoying. Oh, we are over. I guess we'll do one more. We need to close with Bud Powell, a little bebop. Uh, I take this time to say thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. The only ball game in town basically is streaming. So anything you can donate, it's appreciated. Little, small, big, whatever. If you can't, tell your friends about enjoy the spirit of the music. And I might as well mention next week I'll be back at home with another interesting program. That's the 30th. However, middle of February 14th, Valentine's will be at a famous place in El Granada near. Half Moon Bay, the Box Society. Kai will be there. We'll have rhythm, veteran rhythm section, Jeff Chambers and Jason Miller. Great. Jason Lewis, great rhythm team. And our featured guy will be Alvan Johnson. He's known as the King of Blues in Russia. He's just a great blues singer. But I'm happy to say Alban has been enjoying doing another side of him, singing ballads in a beautiful, subtle way, not over the top. When he sat in with us at Yoshi's, he sang these foolish things, he brought the house down. He was singing beautiful ballads and with a soulful way, similar style as Johnny Hartman, Mr. B, but Alban has got his own rich dip deep baritone voice. That's February 14th. Put it on your calendar. And let's finish the evening with Bud Powell bouncing with Bud.
Thank you.